Good morning, everyone. This is, um, welcome to my channel. This is Daniel. Welcome to Angle Guys. For those of you that are new, welcome. For those of you that are returning, welcome back. For those of you that support me over on Patreon, thank you so very much for your subscriptions. I greatly appreciate them. This is the weekly forecast. It is the Sunday forecast. It is the underpinning energy for the week. Starting on Sunday, the 5th of March, which it looks like the full moon is in Leo. And it goes till the Saturday, the 11th of March. Um, each of these cards represents for a day or two of the week the energy that's going on around us or, you know, behind the scenes that we might want to be aware of. Um, some of you may experience all of these cards, and then some, some of you might only be experiencing one of these cards this week. So kind of take what you need and leave the rest. You're all on different timelines, so you'll be experiencing this at different rates. You have to figure out if and where it fits in your life, if at all. If it doesn't fit, that's okay. It doesn't mean that it's, you're doing anything wrong, nothing's broken. It just might not be, you might be working on something different. It may not be your reading. Um, the readings are originally created for those dates, but if you see it on a different date and it applies, by all means, utilize the reading. For those of you that are new, please check out the drop-down menu. In there are some housekeeping rules, things I want you to think about when utilizing the channel. <coughs> How to follow me on social media, in the, uh, either at Instagram or my Facebook business page. You can also request a reading from me at either of those two places. Know that I will not solicit you for a reading. And then simple ways to support the channel. You can do so by leaving me a thumbs up, uh, subscribing to the channel if you feel so inclined, sharing the video out, and um, by all means, um, uh, uh, what's the other? leaving me a question or comment. I do appreciate all of those too. So let's see what's going on this week. What do we need to know? What does spirit want us to know? What do the cards want us to know? This is a broad spectrum reading, so I do speak in broad terms. You'll have to figure out if and where it fits in your life, if at all. So keep that in mind. And each one of you is going to experience some of this stuff that I'm talking about, um, probably around completely different scenarios. So be prepared for that too. Trust your intuition above all else. So let's see what the cards want us to know. At the beginning of the week, we have the Seven of Emotions. So this is the Seven of Cups. Seven of Cups, Cups is the element of water, right? It's our emotions. It's how we feel. The Seven of Cups often indicates making the right decision, maybe a little bit of confusion, trepidation, worry about whether or not we are doing or feeling in alignment with the decision we need to make, right? I get this feeling distinctly when I look at this, that there might be some time or patience that's required of us. We may need to be checking our emotions every so often as we're making decisions early in the week about what we're doing, how we're um, moving or acting in our life, what other people are doing, how they're moving and acting in our life. Um, we can find clarity, but I feel like sometimes the Seven of Cups can feel overwhelming because there might be so many choices that we don't know which one's the right one. But we have to believe in ourselves, right? And we have to trust whatever it is that we are feeling and make our decisions from that place. In some ways, I feel like this card has the potential. I'm feeling it from this card because of these white lines, almost like depicting like a light or a truth coming out emotionally for us, that at some point through this patience and this contemplation, emotional contemplation, we will find the clear answer. And these fish are all swimming towards the future. So it indicates to me that the truth does come out of how we feel about a situation, a person, a, a relationship, or whatever it is that we're dealing with. But it may be a little bit hard at first. It might be a little bit, you know, we might be a little bit reluctant to make a decision or a commitment towards something. Um, but as we sit in this energy and we contemplate, we learn to trust our emotional barometer too, to use it as a tool to help us to make clearer decisions that are better defined and in alignment with ourselves. We need to trust ourselves and how we feel is definitely the key with this card. Let's look at the midweek. The midweek is the fool. So this indicates that we will trust whatever it is that we are feeling. Um, because it's the fool, we may not fully, <laughs> I'm just going to say this, we may not fully have 100% faith in what we're feeling and the decision that we've made because sometimes the fool is about it's definitely major arcana energy. It's a cycle starting over, or it's a new beginning, and that's always exciting, right? But 
The fool sometimes has to take a risk in moving without having all of the plans laid out in front of them. By being excited by the opportunity that the choice that we make presents to us, the new avenue, the new way of being, the new direction we may be heading in, and being brave enough to trust that direction, to trust those emotions, to trust how we feel, and then move towards it. Taking the risk, opening ourselves up to the opportunities that are out there. Again, with the fool, we may not have all of the like uh, plans laid out before us, right? For those of you that are a little bit control freaky, if you're anything like me, you want to know like, oh, I'm going to do this, then this will happen, then I'm going to do this, and then this will happen. And that's not necessarily how the universe works or how things always play in. There's a faith with the fool that allows us to be embraced by the universe, by what's going on around us, and then still taking action, um, still taking movement, and op uh, like feeling optimistic about that regardless of the outcome, right? And that's why sometimes people look at the fool from the more negative side of thinking that, oh, they're foolish, they're taking too big of a risk. That's not necessarily true here. Sometimes I feel like, especially with that seven of cups before us in the early part of the week, we might be taking, it might be riskier for us to stay in that confusion or that worry and not make a decision. This fool says, we're willing to go forward on our gut or on how we feel, regardless of whether or not it seems maybe practical or socially acceptable or understood by others. So there is hope in the midweek to move forward for sure. Let's look at the end of the week card. All right, I'll take it. It's the Ace of Materials. This is the most beautiful Ace of Pentacles I have ever seen. Aces indicate new beginnings, oftentimes surprises, but this Ace of Pentacles is solid. Where the fool might not necessarily understand or know which direction, not, it's not about knowing which direction, it's about knowing how the direction is going to play out or what is going to be along our journey as we go, but still taking that risk. The Ace of Pentacles says that, in my opinion, new opportunities present themselves to us very much in a 3D capacity that could be around money, relationships, uh, security, uh, uh, how we experience the 3D world, but to me, it feels in alignment to us. It feels a little bit surprising or like a turnover, a new chapter opening up, especially with the full leading this Ace of Pentacles. But this chapter is, in my opinion, because it's the Ace of Pentacles, it's very right. It's on the money. It's ready to go. It's, um, we ground and like by the end of the week, we're believing much more so solidly and we're grounded in the decisions that we're making and we're moving forward. I love all of these flowers around her, like these ideas, these um, possibilities blooming within our mind and within the actions that we take to lead us towards more beauty, more harmony, more um, opportunity, right? So keep that in mind. Let's go to the Miracles Now card. Okay, interesting card. To travel further on my, and she uses all these words, to travel further on my path of personal growth, I call on my own spiritual running buddies for help. That means call in spirit, call in your angels, your guides, your own higher self, your God connection to, the, or your connection to the universe to assist you in finding the um, certainty within this seven of cups and then to take the risk with the fool and then to ground that risk with the ace of pentacles and begin to move forward take the gift and run with it. You know, we're talking about spiritual running buddies. We're not alone in this, right? Even if we might feel alone, and that might be some of the fear that we're feeling in the early part of the week around whatever it is we're looking at or dealing with, we're not alone. And we can, like, we will and can move forward, especially with this, the word there, travel further, and the fool. We, we might have to be brave, is my feeling. There's, a, there's an element of bravery here that I feel like but it's self-chosen, um, and it's um, from there, once we choose it within ourselves, we then open it up to the universe or to our higher selves, our guides, to assist us in moving forward, and they do. They show up through the magic of that ace. Oftentimes, to me, aces, because they are surprises. They usually come from the universe, from our... Um, uh, our guides, you know, unexpectedly, and they're often welcome surprises. So I do feel like answers will be given to us, but we have to like trust ourselves, make the choice or take the action, and then 
uh, invite in that assistance, you know, otherworldly assistance, so to speak. And don't invite in just everybody, guys. Invite in, like, when you speak in your mind or in your heart, invite in your angels. Invite in your spirit guides. Don't just be like, help me, you know? That sends a message out to anything that's out there to come arrive at you and give you, like, indication of what you need or whatever. That can lead to more confusion. We want to be our working with our guides, with the universe, with our higher self, with our own, you know, um, angels, our guardian angels, specifically call upon our ancestors, specifically call upon them, right? The ascended masters, call upon them. Don't just like put a, like a, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like a all points bulletin out to the spirit world and then like see what comes back to you because sometimes that can be overwhelming too. Let's go to the clarifiers. I don't think you guys will because of the Ace of Pentacles. She's solid in, in sure. Aces oftentimes represent the number one, which is the self. And it being Pentacles says to me, we will be sure in the decision that we've made within ourselves, but um, we might require some spiritual assistance while moving forward. We have the Strength card, Leo Energy. Let me just throw these out here. We have the Ace of Wands. So we have two Aces. This is in alignment with what we spiritually desire or want. Um, again, it can be a new thing, uh, a new um, path or desire or something that didn't otherwise seem available to us. When we have two Aces, the one of Spirit and the one of 3D, we've got 5D and 3D. There's an alignment taking place here. We have the strength to see it through, to get us there. Right? We have the balance of the masculine and the feminine to take us on this journey. We have to trust it and trust our guides. And then the last card is the Hierophant, which is um, Taurus energy, which ties in nicely to the Ace of Pentacles, but it's also highly spiritual, too. The Hierophant can indicate um, spiritual union, intelligence, education, higher knowledge, institutions. It is a pillar card. It's a very strong and stable card. It's our own spiritual truth coming into alignment with how we feel emotionally. Remember, I call on my spiritual running buddies for help. They're going to come and assist the Hierophant and bring the truth of what the Hierophant knows to be true through, and we can like reside in that. Again, it's grounded. Although it's spiritual, it is grounded and strong. It is a truth that we need to follow, that we need to be strong and trust and stay focused on the desire, the manifestation of it, and then move forward in that reality. We have all of the strength here to make this new turnover or decision of the fool. Let's go to the grounding stone. Okay, and the grounding stone for the week is clarity. Now, I don't think we're going, and we want to ground in this idea of clarity, correct? I don't know that we'll have it completely in the first part of the week and the midweek. I feel like the clarity really sets in through the Hierophant, through the Strength card, and through the Ace of Pentacles. We may find this clarity further on in the week when we get to that Ace of Pentacles, and a little bit of it in the Fool, but sometimes the Fool has to go in a little, not blind per se, but a little bit in faith, um, a little bit more open. And that's why we call in spirit to assist us as we move further on our path, as we travel further. This clarity, as we focus and ground in this clarity, as these new opportunities come to us through these aces, this clarity will help to guide us through this week, <coughs> excuse me, towards new beginnings and what it is that we want. And it will make it, I feel like it will make it more and more real uh, more and more possible, more and more sort of grounded and becoming more and more of our truth and us being able to take action towards that truth um, through this clarity that we are um, focusing on, nurturing, embracing, grounding in to um, lead us through this week and into the next, right? Um, this is what I feel like is a big opportunity for all of us. This opportunity may show up in different ways around different situations, so be prepared for it. Um, you know, even if it feels like, I said, emotionally confusing in the beginning or fearful, ground in this clarity all this week and allow this clarity to be your guide, to be your barometer and trust it. Um, and whatever, whenever you need that assistance, call in, you know, your 
N no joke, call into Charlie's Angels. <laughs> Cover me, Breen, I'm going in. All right, that is your reading, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit that thumbs up button. Subscribe to the channel. Leave me a question or comment. Um, share the video out. Tell me how your week is going. I look forward to seeing you all tomorrow, and we'll see how this energy progresses. All right, love you all. Take care. Bye-bye.